Our raised garden beds have no water source. Well, hey everybody, I'm Bill with Live Simple, Live Free, and I gotta get some water out here. We gotta be able to water the garden when it doesn't rain. So that's what I'm gonna be doing in this video. Since I put the gardens right here near the house, instead of way back there where I originally intended, they're close to the house so I can get water. And there actually is a water source right there. Right there. But there's a problem with it. Let me show you. Now, first of all, this is a yard faucet, which makes perfect sense if this would be out near the garden because it brings water up from underneath. When you lift this to turn it on, this bar right here, the shutoff valve is way down below the frost and so it keeps it from freezing in the winter. So it would be perfect if I had this out there by the garden. And eventually I'll probably do that, but I'll have to dig a trench below the frost in order to run the pipe so it won't freeze. Now, why in the world they have a yard faucet right here next to the house makes absolutely no sense at all because you can just put a, 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 a hose bib here a hose spigot right there on the wall or up here so why they did this I don't have a clue but I can still use it it still works except for one problem this is hilarious watch what happens when I turn this thing on it's got little pinholes all along this seam right here. Absolutely hilarious. And that's even with nothing on the uh, end of the hose, the water's flowing freely out of there. If I would put a some kind of a shutoff nozzle on the end of the hose, it would be even worse. So this isn't really doable. So what I'm gonna do, until I can actually run one of these all the way out there to the garden, I'm gonna put a, a hose spigot in the wall and it just so happens there's already a hole right there. So here's a hole ready drilled for me, but I don't think this was a, a spigot before because when you put it in, you need to screw this in to hold it tight and there are no holes here that were driven that were uh, screwed in. So this may have been a hole where they had a pipe that came out for a drain for a dehumidifier or something like that. I have no idea, but at any rate, this fits right in there. And then I can just screw that right in there like that. That's gonna work well. I don't even have to drill a hole and I can fill this one. Now the way these work, to keep them from freezing in the winter, the valve is actually back here. When you turn this to turn the water on, there's a bar that goes from there all the way back and the valve is back here to shut the water off. And when you install it, you want to have it sloped this way so that when you turn it off, the water will drain out of here and there won't be any water in here to freeze in the winter. Now just to caution, if you have one of these and you have a hose on there, when the hose is on there, when you shut it off, the water can't drain out and it can still freeze. So always make sure that you take the hose off in the fall before you have any freezing weather or this will freeze, this will crack and it'll have to be replaced. <clears throat> so when I put this in there, I just need to make sure that it's sloped this way a little bit so that the water will run out. And this just happens to slope the right direction. I'm fortunate there. Now I'm gonna be using Tapcon screws to screw this in, which are screws that are specifically designed for masonry. You drill the hole and you can just screw them right in. Now you have to have the exact right size of drill bit and it tells you right on the side. The drill has to be 1 32nd of an inch less than the, smaller than the diameter of the, of the screw. So this is a 3 16 diameter screw, so I need a 5 32nd drill bit. Nothing else will work. And it tells you that right on the, on the package. So I'm just going to mark where that goes.
then I'm going to pull this out and drill it because that was in the way and this was drilling in at an angle and I want it straight. You have to drill that slowly because if you go too fast and the bit heats up, you'll ruin the, uh, the edge on the bit and it won't cut anymore. So take it nice and slow while you do that. Okay, so the tap cons are screwed right into the, the block wall, nice and tight. It's not going to go anywhere. So here I am, back in the crawl space again. Fortunately, this time I'm at the end where there's a little bit more room, so I'm not crawling on my belly like I was when I did the, uh, the plumbing to move the washer and dryer. So, this is where the faucet came through. Now the hole here was a little small and the angle was wrong so I had to make it bigger so that I can get the angle correct so the water will drain out. So I'm going to go ahead and put a hanger here to hold this up so that I can make sure that the angle of this is correct. So now I know that this is draining downhill so it'll drain out and won't freeze. Now the back end of this pipe coming through, the spigot coming through, is half inch threaded and I'm going to be using half inch PEX pipe. So I have to put an adapter on there. I have this adapter it's threaded on this side and PEX fitting on this side. So I'm going to put on some Oh, just drop my Teflon and rolled all down all over the place. So I'm going to put on some Teflon tape here on the threads to seal it. So I got this side of the fitting done, and for the pecs, I use this little ring, put it on there, the crimping ring, press that on, then use the crimping tool. And that is finished. Now I did a video just a couple weeks ago moving the uh, the, the hookups, the water, and the electric for my washer and dryer when I moved it. And I did a much more thorough explanation of how the PEX works and the, the crimping ring and all of that. So if you'd like to find more detail about that, how the PEX works, I'll put a link right up here where you can go and see that video. Okay, so this is the cold water pressure tank. This is what uh, regulates the pressure with the well pump. And so then the water comes out of the bottom of there and comes up this way. This is the main supply for the entire house. So I'm going to cut it in right here. So the main house supply is right here and this is my PEX pipe. It's coming in from the spigot which is right over there. I'm going to hook it in like this. I want to put in a shutoff valve right here. So I'll do that before I make this connection.
So I got this little valve right here. Go ahead and put that on. All right, so I got that crimped on. I'm gonna put that about like that. Now this is PEX and this is CPVC and they're not the same. I can't use a crimp connector for that. So what I'm going to use is this. These are just press on. This is three quarter inch for, for this. And this is half inch for that. Another thing that's really cool about this, if I would cut this and then try to glue in a CPVC fitting, there's water inside of here. I have turned it, turned it off and drained the pressure, but there's still water in here. And if there's any water that gushes out while I'm doing the glue, it doesn't work. It, it, I, it, it can be a real mess. You have to cut it out and do it again. This you can press in there even if the water is still running out. So I really like the way that works. So I got a can down here to catch any water that might be running out. These PVC, I mean, these PEX cutters are really cool, like scissors, but they don't work on CPVC very well. So I have to use a regular type pipe cutter. more water in there than I expected. <laughs> okay, so this really surprised me how much water is in there. It's starting to, pressure starting to come out and go away now, but I can just press this on. Press this on. <clears throat> and then press this in. And just like that, it's done. Isn't that cool? Now I turn off the valve here. And it's finished. All right, I'm gonna turn the valve back on and I'm gonna check the water, turn the water on and then check the outside and see if the water comes out. Okay, so I got the water turned back on I went back under the crawl space to make sure there's no leaks and there are no, are no leaks, it's all fine. So now let's see if the water is going to come out out here. Very cool. Thanks for watching everybody. Live simple, live free. Be blessed.